Declan. What if all the video games you played were real, and the characters were real, and the people were real? Hmm. Then I'd probably hurry and grab a gun. Oh yeah, gun? What? All the video games? Yeah. Then obviously there's gonna be some bad stuff. Okay, what if all of the people in the games that you were shooting at and dying were actually real people? Like, the characters were real, and you weren't just killing something imaginary, it was something that had feelings and voice and a heart. You're making me feel guilty! And you should. Those poor characters in Call of Duty. They're not poor, they were trying to hurt me too. But what if they're real people? Then I'd be killing a lot of people who like to dress like each other. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had this idea in my mind for the longest time, having to do with video games. Here's the thought. I played so many games growing up, and then I found this RPG, this MMO, called Star Wars Galaxies. It consumed my life. I played it for days on end. I had my 56K modem blocking up the phone line. Everyone was so mad. And so many memories and groups and clans and raids and all of these awesome things. And then it all went away. And then this happened to lots of different games and people where they're playing this MMO like EverQuest or something else and it just disappears. All those memories, like your life, all this time you put into it, and it's gone, and I was thinking, what if what if those worlds were real? Like, what if those NPCs were real people? What if everything was just a place where you go to escape, and when you log off and go back home, things were still going on? And so, what happens to it all? What happens to those servers? And then sometimes you get gamers who keep those servers up years later, like Anarchy Online and other systems like that that had servers running for years with a few players keeping them live, and then those get shut down too, and it's like you're destroying a world. So I thought about that. I was like, man, that's kind of emotional. That's kind of cool. I want to write a story about this. So that's what I did. I wrote a story called Neon City, and it's the story of Rainer in this amazing cyberpunk world with borderlands and sand dunes and monsters and all kinds of cool things. And what's his story? What is Rainer's story? What's this game story? So you're gonna find out in the super exciting video game focused episode of World of Walbeck. See you inside. Neon City. The sky glowed in orange and purple as the sun continued its descent beyond the city. Rainer didn't have to look at his watch to know it was time to make his way to the city edge. One didn't want to be left in the dunes after dark. The glow of Neon City would soon stand as a beacon in the night against the desolate borderlands. He shouldered his backpack, grabbed his rusted iron rifle, and then pushed down the sandy dunes. He would travel for the next 42 minutes towards the city's edge and the South Sentry gates. Rainer made this trek every night. His duties for the day had been fulfilled, and now it was time to begin the night shift. He thought back to happier days, or at least busier days. Long ago, hundreds of travelers would seek his help to cross the borderlands and to the city beyond. These days, no one made their way neither to nor from Neon City. That is, except for Jess. She had been his longest friend over the years. Others had left and never returned, but Jess had always come back. Now, it seemed, even she was gone too. As he continued walking, the sandy ground merged with asphalt, and he looked up to the dilapidated sentry gates. A single guard stood watch, dressed in his worn black armor and holding a rifle across his chest. The night is upon us said Rainer as he did every night. The man gave his usual scowl, and then Rainer passed through the rusted sentry walls and their affixed laser cannons. He thought back to a terrible battle that had transpired in this very spot. There had been two travelers he had never met before. It was his job to take them from Neon City to the city beyond. They had been caught off guard by a massive sand yawl. There had never been such an awful encounter that close to the city. The three of them were powerless to stop it. 
The creature had chased them to the city gates, where the wall cannons easily penetrated the beast's thick hide, leaving its putrid corpse to the scavengers. If there was one thing you could say about the City of Lights, the only filth that ever got into the place was the filth that it wanted. Raynor couldn't remember the last time he had fired his rifle. He looked up into the towering city in all of its beauty and all of its grime. Large glowing signs plastered every building from both the lower and upper zones. The upper zone lights faded into the obscurity of the toxic gas that was held at higher levels. Though he could spy all of the usual street slugs in their various vocations, he could feel the emptiness of it all. The jet bikes rested motionless against the curbs, and the shuttle grubs kept their purchase against the electropoles. Hey, Rainer, baby, you looking for a good time? said a half-naked woman. Her metal arm glowed against the green sign above her. Yes, said Rainer as he continued to move past her. A good time is all he ever dreamed of, but it wasn't to be found among the same old borgs and slugs of Neon City. It was always the same people doing the same old things. Suddenly, a roar erupted overhead. Rainer looked up to see a bright red cruiser screaming across the misty upper zone. His eyes went wide and his heart skipped a beat. He hadn't seen a cruiser in years. No one in the city could afford them. No one except the travelers. His eyes focused on the craft and his retina reader marked it as a J-0 2300 speed cruiser. It raced outside of the city and then over the dunes and into the borderlands. Rainer's heart sank. If one owned a J-0, then they had no use for a guide. Of course, these days, the very few travelers who did make their way to Neon City all had their own transportation, and none of them required his services. The few that were left were wealthy enough to buy anything they needed. No reason to hire a low-level grunt like him. As Rainer delved further into the city, the sounds of music could be heard blasting from various cyber clubs and pleasure houses. He could see his destination just up ahead. His mobile booth stood amid a dozen other booths that were operated by merchants. As he approached it, its front doors unlocked and automatically opened for him. Two panels opened, one to the left and the other to the right. A series of tools, laser pistols, and iron rifles could be seen racked against the panels. He rested his backpack on the countertop and hooked his rifle into a vertical slot on the right. Rainer stared mindlessly at the scores of street dancers, chem hustlers, and food carts that were scattered throughout the city center. He knew that tonight would be no different than any other night. The neon lights would flash and blink, and the music would blast until dawn, but all of it on blind eyes and deaf ears. As far as he was concerned, Neon City was really a city of the dead. As he anticipated, the night slowly turned into day. His blasters were not sold, and his weapon mods remained untouched. The mindless night merchants closed their booths, and the day shops opened in their place. Rainer grabbed his pack and rifle and moved down the street. His booth closed behind him automatically. He would now return to the outskirts and the dunes to await travelers who would not come. The Neon City did not sleep, and neither would he. A better man would have left this place a long time ago. But Rainer wasn't a better man. Though he had made many travels across the borderlands, he had never even taken a glimpse of the city beyond. His journey always ended at the Figma outpost, and then he would make his way back alone. An entire world awaited him, a world of adventure, excitement, peril, and even death. Rainer had once watched a traveler die, right in front of him. He often wondered what it would be like to die, but he doubted that day would ever come for him and he knew somehow that he never would explore the vastness of the world. Rainer took his 42-minute walk from the sentry walls to the tallest dune in the west. To the untrained eye, all of these dunes looked the same, but Rainer knew the exact spot of his perch, even down to the angle of where his footsteps would rest. He jammed the butt of his rifle into the sand and folded his arms. The heat of the sun would soon be upon him in full force, and the city would wave in the air like a mirage. Hours went by, and Rainer stood motionless, thinking about nothing. Dusk would soon be upon the land, and he would return to the empty city and his monotonous evening shift. He gazed across the stretch of desert wasteland resting before him. He had seen it all a thousand times. His soul felt as barren as the dirt. 
There was no joy to be found within his heart, but neither was there sorrow. There was no elation, nor was there anger, no bitter and no sweet. There was just him and nothing much else of any significance. As the first sun began to set beyond the neon city, a peculiar sight emerged from within the sentry gates. It almost looked like a person. It moved slowly, but with a sure direction. The minutes seemed like hours as the figure crept closer to the dunes. And then he arrived, a tall man with a shorn head holding a gazer blade twice as long as himself. Rayner turned to the man and, astonishing himself, spoke without hesitation. The borderlands are treacherous. Need a guide to Figma outpost? Been there, done that, my friend, said the man as he passed by. But how about you join me for one last hunt, Rayner? Rayner just nodded, and the man continued forward, eventually disappearing beyond the dunes. It was nice to see a familiar face, he thought, even if it wasn't Jess. A few minutes passed, and more figures emerged from the distant city. There were men and women of all colors and sizes. There were even a few Borgs among their ranks. Some of them ran while others calmly walked. He counted ten, and then twenty, and even over a hundred people making their way into the dunes. Still brooding over the forlorn city, eh, Rayner? said a she-borg, wearing a trench coat that barely covered her breasts. A yellow-rusted jet bike zoomed at lightning speeds, leaving a trail of dust behind it. A group of travelers emerged from the sandy mist passing on each side of Rayner at his perch. He looked eagerly amongst the oncoming crowds, hoping to spot Jess. But she was nowhere to be found. Rayner would ask an occasional passerby if they might like his assistance, but he was rejected every time. Poor guy said one woman's voice. Let's get this sand, y'all! screamed another. It was all such a sight to behold, as it had been in the first days so long ago. The people were chatting and laughing, and some of them were even dancing. Hundreds of travelers turned into thousands as they made their way into the borderlands, each one of them acknowledging Rayner, but none employing his services. The Ender Sun began to make its final descent in the east, and the darkness would soon arrive. The last of the travelers were now making their way to the top of the dune. One of them stopped at the peak of the dune and turned to look at Rayner. Though he looked as normal as any traveler might look, he gave an ominous stare. I'm sorry, Rayner. We had some good times back in the day, huh? And then he disappeared into the night, and so did everyone else for that matter. Rayner was now alone and would soon make his solo trip back to his lonesome cart where he would speak to no one and where no items would be sold. He turned to face the city, and a figure stood in front of him. Though his expression was as it always had been, he hoped that the woman standing before him could sense his great joy in seeing her. Jess smiled and looked Rayner in the eyes. We're going for one final hunt. See if we can actually bag a Sanyal. It's not like it matters if we die at this point, you know. She stared at Rayner in a way that only she could do it. There had always been this connection between him and Jess, a connection which he had never had with any other traveler. Though he would never be able to express such things to her, he hoped she knew, somehow and some way. Well, Rayner, I guess this is it. I've got to go. A moment passed by, and then Rayner extended his hand out to her. The borderlands are treacherous. Need a guide to Figma outpost? Jess brushed her short black hair from her face and then clapped her hands. Yes, she said. Rayner's empty heart was suddenly filled as it had once been so long ago. He grabbed his rifle and strapped on his pack and then led Jess over the dunes. They traveled through the Lark Pit and passed through the Scorch Zone, though it was far less dangerous and miserable at night. Jess laughed at one point when a gurgle frog leaped from under a rock and attached its tongue onto her leg. Rainer blasted the creature with perfect precision as its innards splattered onto both of them. I miss this, she said to him as they continued their journey. In the distance, the scream of a terrible beast could be heard, and the fire of a large explosion could be seen on the horizon. But Jess didn't even seem to notice, or if she did, she didn't care. Rainer and Jess made their way through the treacherous borderlands as they had done so many times before. Minutes turned into hours, and just for a moment, to Rayner, all was well in the world. As time went by, they finally reached Figma Outpost. 
It was dimly lit with only a single sentry tower to guard the entire base. It brought the same dreary loneliness as the great neon city. But Raynor was happy. He was filled with purpose, and he was with Jess, his friend of so many years. In the distance, beyond the Black Mountains, the lights of the city beyond glimmered in the night sky. We have arrived, he said as he always had. I'm so sorry, Raynor. They're finally shutting down the server. He heard her words, but thought that she ought not to be sorry for anything. He had performed his duty, and she had been a loyal companion. Raynor turned to make his way back through the borderlands to return to his post in the Neon City. Though his legs pulled him forward, inside somehow, he knew that he would never reach his destination. Goodbye, my friend, she said as he disappeared into the darkness. Thanks so much for listening and watching. If you want to see more of this, all you have to do is click that subscribe button. Click it and the bell. We need more subscribers. I'm so depressed without subscribers. Please subscribe to me and to these stories, and I will keep making them just for you. Until next time, see you later.